Greetings everyone and welcome to my channel. I am thrilled to take you on a journey to Vancouver, a city that stole my heart. If you're planning a trip to this beautiful place, you're in luck because today I am excited to share with you my 4 day itinerary, complete with tips on where to stay, musty attractions and of course the best food spots in town. Join me as I reminisce on our unforgettable trip last September following our Bath adventure. From stunning natural landscapes to delicious culinary delights, I'll be revealing everything we experienced during our stay in Vancouver. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be inspired. During our trip to Vancouver, we found that staying at the University of British Columbia was a steal, costing only $193 per night. We spent a total of $775 for a four-night stay, which was a fraction of the cost compared to other options within the city that were charging over $300 per night. Although the university is about an hour bus ride away from the city, we found the journey to be enjoyable and worth it, as we were able to save a significant amount of money on accommodations. Plus, the dorm rooms were surprisingly clean and comfortable, with our own private washroom and kitchen area. Who knew a student dorm could be this nice? Get ready for an adventure-packed day one of our Vancouver trip. We hopped on a bus which cost $3.10 per ride to our first destination. We start our day off with a tasty sushi lunch at Sukiya Japanese Snack and Bar, located in the bustling South Granville area. The fish was super fresh and high quality as Vancouver is known for its delicious sushi due to its proximity to the waters. And what's even better is that tax in Vancouver is only 5% compared to the usual 13% in Toronto, making it feel like everything is slightly cheaper. After lunch, we made our way over to Granville Island, a vibrant destination in Vancouver that's famous for its public market, artisan studios, and breathtaking waterfront views. We suggest taking public transportation, biking, or walking to the island as it can get quite packed with tourists. We spent our time exploring the fresh produce, seafood, baked goods, and artisanal products, and even artist studios, galleries, and shops. If we had known about all the incredible dining options on the island, we would have eaten there instead. Next up, we hopped on the Aqua Bus, a popular water transportation service in Vancouver that's affordable and eco-friendly, with zero-emission electric boats that run on solar power. One ticket costs about $5.35. We made our way downtown to Richmond Night Market, which had an admission fee of $7. The line was long, and we must have waited over an hour to get in. The Richmond Night Market is a must-do when visiting Vancouver, with over 200 vendors selling a variety of goods and dozens of food vendors offering Asian-inspired street foods such as grilled meats, bubble tea, stinky tofu, dumplings, and more. The market also had a lively and colorful atmosphere with festive lights and decorations. The Richmond Night Market operates on weekends and holidays from May through October and attracts thousands of visitors each year. On our second day in Vancouver, we embarked on an adventure to explore the city's Chinatown. However, we were caught off guard to find the area quite desolate. To our dismay, we discovered that it had been struggling due to the presence of downtown Eastside neighborhood, which has been grappling with complex social issues including poverty, drug addiction, and homelessness. The downtown Eastside neighborhood, also known as DTES, has been in the spotlight for years due to these daunting challenges, including high rates of HIV and other health concerns. As we walked through the neighborhood, I attempted to capture footage of the area, but was sternly reprimanded by a local lady. I quickly ceased filming, and therefore, I didn't get much footage of the neighborhood. Nevertheless, our curiosity about the area has peaked, and we were intrigued by the history and culture of the neighborhood. Despite some initial setbacks, we were determined to make the most out of our trip. With the help of a local friend, we visit some incredible spots that we'll never forget. One of the highlights was Vlad Cao Chinese Restaurant, which served up some of the best Xi'an cuisine we've ever tasted. The duck soup was especially memorable and still has us salivating today. We highly recommend this restaurant to anyone visiting Vancouver. We also explored some of the city's beautiful park, including Lighthouse Park and White Cliff Park. The stunning natural scenery and crystal clear water made for some truly unforgettable experiences. We even spotted scuba divers exploring the underwater ecosystem in Whitecliff Park. And, as the name suggests, Lighthouse Park boasts a magnificent lighthouse that has been operational since 1874 and still plays a vital role in guiding ships safely through the inlet. Of course, no trip to Vancouver would be complete without a visit to the iconic Gastown steam clock. The clock chimes and releases a small burst of steam every quarter hour, which adds to the clock's charm and attraction. The clock's design is reminiscent of the Victorian era 
and a steam-powered industrial revolution, which gives it a unique and timeless feel. Before enjoying some late-night sushi at Matsuyama, which starts at 9 p.m., we took some time to kill and relax at a cat cafe. The admission fee was about $16, and we enjoyed spending time with these furry felines. Next, we took the bus to Matsuyama, a restaurant that exceeded our expectations. The sushi portions were larger than life and left us amazed. Interestingly, many customers seemed to offer the cooked dishes instead of the sushi, which led us to wonder if they were the restaurant's specialty. Take a look at these massive plates of food and affordable prices. We couldn't believe our eyes. Overall, while downtown Vancouver may have been a bit lackluster, we found plenty of amazing things to do and see throughout the city. From incredible cuisine to breathtaking natural scenery, Vancouver truly has something for everyone. On our third day, we decided to explore the beautiful region surrounding Vancouver by renting a car from Thrifty Car Rental for $71 for a full day. We opted for the Tesla upgrade for an additional cost of $42 and set out to discover the many attractions located along the Sea to Sky Highway. We even get to pass through the famous Lions Gate Bridge along the way to our first destination. It was opened in 1938 and it was named after the two lions that stand at the bridge self entrance. The bridge was designed by engineer John Anderson and architect Edward Elliott, who were inspired by the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. The bridge's distinctive green color was chosen to blend with the natural surroundings and was originally intended to serve as a camouflage in case of a wartime attack. Our first stop was the Britannia Mine Museum. The admission fee was $39. The museum is situated on the site of the Britannia Mines, a once thriving copper mining operation that was active from the early 1900s until the 1974. The museum is dedicated to preserving the history of mining in British Columbia, and visitors can explore the old mine site, view exhibits on mining equipment and techniques, and even take a train ride deep into the mine to witness firsthand the harsh working conditions of miners in the early 20th century. After our eye-opening experience at the museum, we made our way to the Sea to Sky Gondola, a breathtaking cable car system that transports visitors from the town of Squamish to the top of the Sea to Sky Summit. The ride to the summit takes about 10 minutes and provides panoramic views of the Howe Sound, the coastal mountains, and the Squamish Valley. At the top, there's a viewing platform, suspension bridge, hiking trails, and a restaurant, making it a must-see attraction for anyone visiting the area. Take a break from the hustle and bustle of the city and escape to the quaint town of Squamish, just a short 10 minute drive away. With a population of approximately 20,000 people, Squamish is nestled in the midst of breathtaking natural beauty, with the imposing Stowamish chief, a towering granite monolith, serving as an awe inspiring backdrop. Immerse yourself in nature at the Squamish Estuary, a wetland area at the head of Howe Sound, which offers a serene spot for bird watching and wildlife viewing. As we continued our scenic drive, we couldn't resist the allure of the picturesque town of Whistler, renowned worldwide as a premier winter sports destination. Home to the legendary Whistler Black Home Ski Resort, one of the largest ski resorts in North America, Whistler has hosted many international events, including the 2010 Winter Olympics, and is regarded as one of the top resort destinations in the world. Although we were exhausted and didn't have the energy to explore these two charming towns on foot, we savored a chance to take in the magnificent sight from the comfort of our car, allowing us to unwind and soak in the natural beauty of British Columbia. For dinner, we headed to Richmond and tried out the hot pot at the renowned Xiao Long Khan Hot Pot Restaurant. While the service was impeccable, the spicy beef was too much for us to handle, even for my boyfriend who can usually handle spicy food. Overall, our road trip was an unforgettable experience filled with stunning natural scenery, rich history, and delicious cuisine. On our last day, we simply had to indulge in some authentic dim sum before departing, and what better place to try than a highly rated Dynasty Seafood restaurant. Although a bit pricier than our usual dim sum joint back in Toronto at about $10 per dish, we were still eager to give it a try. Each dish was beautifully presented and bursting with flavors. The glutinous rice durian was an absolute standout, its sticky sweet texture and unique flavor had us savoring every bite. And to our surprise, the sweet and sour pork dish was infused with juicy lychee, the delightful twist we had never encountered before. It was clear to us that Vancouver's dim sum scene is tastier than the one we've had in Toronto. We then decided to take a leisurely bike ride through the stunning Stanley Park. Before we began our adventure, we stopped by the Renaissance European Bakery and Cafe, a charming local coffee shop. I couldn't resist ordering my favorite lavender iced latte for $7, which I thought was on the pricier side. 
we rented a tandem bike from Spokes Bike for half a day at a reasonable price of $57. One of the most popular features of Stanley Park is the seawall, a scenic 9km pathway that encircles the park and provides stunning views of the city skyline, the Burrard Inlet, and the North Shore Mountains. The seawall is used by walkers, joggers, and cyclists, and is a popular spot for photography and sightseeing. One of the park's most notable feature was the awe-inspiring totem poles, which stood tall and proud. We were amazed by the impressive SS Empress of Japan, the Prospect Point Lighthouse, and various bird sightings. We also spotted Siwash Rock, which was located near the Inushuk Sculpture, a famous rock formation on the western shore of the park. The Inushuk was created by Inuit artist Bill Raid in 1986 using yellow cedar woods. Its imposing figure made it a popular attraction for visitors. We couldn't miss the amazing laughter installation, featuring 14 bronze sculptures of laughing people, each standing around 3 meters tall. Created by Chinese artist Yu Min Jun in 2005, this artwork was designed to evoke feelings of joy and happiness. Finally, we stopped by the Rose Garden, a must-see spot in the heart of the park. It is home to over 3,500 rose bushes of various colors and varieties, and it is easy to see why it is such a popular spot for visitors to relax and enjoy the beautiful flowers. The garden was first established in the 1920s by the Vancouver Rose Society. Although the garden is open year-round, the best time to visit it is between June and September when the roses are in full bloom. Overall, our bike ride around the Stanley Park was a delightful experience, and we made sure to take in as much of the park's natural beauty and cultural heritage as possible. After a full day of biking along the stunning seawall and exploring Stanley Park's iconic landmarks, we knew we couldn't leave Vancouver without indulging in some of the world-renowned sushi. So, we made our way to Big Bang, a top-rated sushi spot located in Denmark Street, known for its diverse and delicious food scene. As soon as our sushi platter arrived, we were stunned by the size of the maki and nigeri sushi. In Vancouver, the portions are very generous. We ordered 60 pieces, which have been enough back home in Toronto, but the sheer size of these rolls was a pleasant surprise and we just couldn't finish. If you're a foodie looking for an unforgettable culinary experience, Denmark Street is definitely the place to be. The street is lined with fantastic restaurants and is a must visit for anyone looking to sample some of Vancouver's tastiest dishes. As our journey in Vancouver came to an end, we had to say goodbye and make our way back to our hometown in Toronto. However, before we left, we wanted to share a helpful tip with all of you travel enthusiasts out there. If you're looking to save some money on transportation, Taking the subway to the Vancouver airport for only $6 is a great option. We hope you found this tip useful, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting travel tips and adventures. Thank you for joining us on this trip, and we'll see you next time! Bye.